In the 2013 film Upstream Color, two people, Chris and Jeff, are affected by a parasite. Said parasite has three stages of existence in which it passes from humans to pigs to orchids. A thief infects people with the parasite to steal their money, then an individual called the sampler transfers the parasite to a pig. This gives the sampler the ability to see the lives of the humans through the pigs. He uses these insights to inspire his music, much in the way that music samples from earlier works. When the pigs die, the sampler dumps the carcasses and the parasite changes the color of orchids. The farmers are able to sell these rare orchids. The director has said that the film is meant to invoke ideas about identity and whether or not we have control over our identities. All right. Is that a uh, is that what everyone expected? A basic synopsis of the confusing film and an explanation of the theme of the film? I mean, the theme is rather opaque if you didn't understand the narrative, sure, and nobody would blame you for that. The movie is confusing, but the authorial intention is plain to see once the narrative itself is clear. The text of the film informs the subtext in a way that is not mysterious. The so-called meaning of the film is not hidden. Meaning, meaning, meaning. Uh. Shane Carruth's other film, Primer, never spends any time trying to tell the audience in layman's terms what is going on. It's a time travel movie using really technical talk and never tries to bring the audience into the conversation by explaining it in terms that they might actually understand. Like a Star Trek episode that uses a simple metaphor or simile. You might say Primer doesn't speak down to its audience because of it, but you might also say the opposite that Primer purposefully doesn't even want you to engage in the technical stuff and to just let your mind wander in the infinite possibilities of the narrative. And I don't mean that in some anti-intellectual way. Like when some people say, turn off your brain when watching a movie, that is such bullshit. And it usually isn't confined to that one thing. People who say that usually don't have that just one bad take in isolation. It's generally reflective of worse opinions about more important stuff. Anti-intellectualism is the opposite of how I want the world to be, and the opposite of how the world needs to be in 2019. Now, when I say that it speaks to the heart more than the mind, I mean that maybe writer-director Shane Carruth does not make his movies lacking any explanations because he wants you to piece them together like jigsaw puzzles on your own. No. Maybe he wants you to experience them like amusement park rides and absorb whatever meaning you can glean from it on your own. You aren't meant to be convinced of his fiction, of his lie. You are meant to believe the fiction, believe the lie. That's not how all movies are, obviously. I'm not dismissing analysis, don't get it twisted, but maybe some movies that go out of their way to disengage the audience from meaning and even coherent narrative are meant to force a different kind of experience on you. I started transitioning out of making explanation videos years ago to move on to big picture stuff. There's nothing inherently wrong with those videos, you know, with the word explained in the thumbnail, but that's just not what I want to put into the world, even for movies like Upstream Color that might require explanation. Even now, years after that stopped being my thing, people think that when they click on my videos that I'm supposed to talk about one-to-one -one allegory and really basic stuff and get disappointed when I don't. God, I hate that. The rote quantification of a movie. Pouring the film through a sieve and finding the meaning in what is caught up in it. I'm not a movie reviewer, and I never have been. If you wish to dismiss the director's intentions and form your own personal interpretation of events, that is fine too. But is my interpretation going to be so unique as to get you to stay with me through the entire video? If you Google upstream color analysis, over 18 million results pop up, and it makes me feel so small. There's this scene in the movie in which two characters say goodbye to each other in the morning, and the scene repeats itself with small variations over and over again. The main thread of the film, the narrative about Chris and Jeff, is done within a cycle. A life cycle. The parasite finds its way into their bodies, then the parasite finds its way into pigs, then orchids. It goes on and on. It never ends. That's what the grind of life can feel like. 
It certainly feels like that for me sometimes, just doing this show. I love this show, don't misunderstand me, but I'm worried that I have begun to repeat myself, and if that's true, there is no more meaning in what I say. For example, when I recognized the basic theme of the film, the lack of control over our lives, I considered writing a video essay on free will, but I've done that before. It would be so easy to do it again, but it would also be lazy. I considered explaining the basics of sociology and how we are actually part of systems in which we have minimal control and how that actually fits within the framework of this movie, but I know I've touched on that already. And I hate the direction this video essay is going, by the way. I mean, who do I think I am? Charlie Kaufman? Is it somehow okay for me to write a video essay about how challenging it is to say anything original in a video essay anymore? That itself is also just really played out, even on YouTube, and done better by others than I'm doing right now. Can't I just say that watching upstream color is satisfying? That is the lie I want to believe. It is satisfying in the way that those videos that describe themselves as satisfying are satisfying. If you want to know what upstream color means to me in a very personal and IMHO kind of way, well, it makes me think about my own life. Are Chris and Jeff behaving this way because of their individual personalities or because they are manipulated by someone else? Something else. Everyone wants to feel in control of their lives. It's not only a comfort in terms of your day-to-day, -day, like I want to feel in control of my finances and whether or not I can make rent this month. We want to feel in control of the basics, but in a more substantial way, we all want to feel like control and individuality and choice are tangible products of the universe. That words like fairness and justice aren't just abstract concepts made up to make our lives more bearable in the face of all the evidence that suggests the opposite concepts are true, or that the chaos of the universe does not allow for any such concepts. Chris and Jeff don't have a meet-cute. They meet because they are pushed together by circumstances and forces beyond their control. That means their love is not organic, and that love does not exist in any meaningful way. We don't like it when our lives have no meaning. 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 So we just push back on this and deify humanity as something bold, and deify the singular human as God and master of their own soul because we need to believe in that just to get through the fucking day. If everything is systems too complex to navigate, then it makes us feel... small. Take the universe and grind it down to the finest powder, and sieve it through the finest sieve, and then show me one atom of justice, one molecule of mercy. But people have got to believe that. What's the point? You need to believe in things that aren't true. How else can they become?